What's up guys? Welcome back to David's Feed. In this episode, we're working with Chris Sweet's King Cobras, including the iconic giant king, Oracle. As usual, we have some close calls, so get ready. Alright, we seem to be in a slightly different location to usual. Where are we, Chris? Today we are at my house, actually, because we're gonna work with the King Cobras, and since the renovations are going on at my reptile room, I've moved all the kings here into a big room I've built for them. So today we're hopefully gonna be able to bring out a couple different locality King Cobras, including Oracle at the end, who is by far the most well-known and famous King Cobra in the world, probably. Everyone seems to have at least heard about Oracle before. Yeah, for sure. Gonna be a really good video, I think. All right. So whenever you're ready. I'm ready. Let's go. All right, before we get started, make sure you guys head on over to Chris's channel, where you'll find more videos with these King Cobras and other amazing snakes. Now, the first king we're going to work with today is a mangrove king cobra. And I know not a lot of people know that there are king cobras out in the mangroves. Well, I didn't know that either until a couple of years ago when one came in to one of the snake farms in Thailand. And you can tell by it being a mangrove king by this very unique orange color form. Now, it's still like January, so the colors are gonna be a bit doled out. But this thing in like April and May, super bright orange. Of course, I'm gonna watch what I'm doing here. Because she is very fast, and unlike other kings, they're not fully like terrestrial. They're very good at climbing. Out in the mangroves, they're like climbing through the trees, hunting like uh, boiga, the green cat snakes, the mangrove cat snakes, and other pit vipers around that area. Small retics. Yeah, small retics for sure. So do all king cobras change color over the seasons? Yeah, every king cobra will change color like depending on season, especially like the mating season is when their, their heads pop up in color. Very gorgeous in that time of year. And right now, they like all of my kings are a bit doled out. Well, David, care to have your way with it? Yeah, <laughs> that I came out so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Well, David looks like she's chose you. She is looking at me. Can I handle her a bit? Yeah. Go right ahead. Right, hook or no hook? Nah, I'm good with that. It's fine. I might need you to act as a distraction if you yeah, go no opposite her. She's way jumpier than my normal keywords. She's very good on her I'm drawing she her focus, so but she's still super aware. Yeah, she knows exactly that I'm right behind her. Yeah. One eye is on me, and she's actually turning toward David. Yeah, I can see that she's like looking back at me with one eye. She's not even phased by me anymore, so all of her focus is mostly on David. Which means we need to be careful. Yeah, they're nothing like the typical cobra. They're not in the same genus even if they have the same defensive postures and everything. And the way she is right now, I could probably even go in and give her a little kiss on the head. There we go. Not something I recommend trying. Just look at the orange on her. The mangrove kings, well, as we know, definitely don't get as big or as thick as the 
normal mainland keeper. How old is the specimen? Do you know? This one is about like four or five years old. And how big was she when she came in to you? She's most slightly smaller than that. I'd say like two, one and a half, but shorter. So compared to some of the other ones, you'd say she's really not growing as fast? Not as fast at all. Working with the hub with her is a complete nightmare. Many kings are particularly hard to hook. I find with kings a lot of the time it's easier just to yeah, know what you're doing and use your hands. Chris and David briefly spoke about it before, but just out of shot, Chris is moving his hands and body around, keeping the snake's attention on him. This is crucial. Without that, there's no way David could be handling the snake in the current manner. What an awesome snake. Were you rolling that? Yeah. I put her tail down and have her chase you. I don't necessarily want to no. chase me, but... She took a nice lunge at me there. That reminded me of a uh, certain Henning video. Oh yeah, that did remind a bit of a certain <laughs> Definitely. I think this has to be one of my favorite kings in your entire collection. You can see it's calmed down quite a lot now. It's just sitting, staring at Rupert behind the camera. Such a beautiful snake, especially from my perspective. The light is really shining through the hood and I can see the orange color quite strongly. And it's losing concentration a bit. And there it is, back. All right, we're gonna bring this one away now. All right, we're getting to Cobra number two. We're upsizing a bit. This one's quite a lot bigger than the first one. Which one is this, Chris? Well, we are going to have Omen out today. Omen is one of my favorites as well. Actually, I say that about all of them. They're all so nice. <laughs> there she is. Let's see if she's willing to come out for us. Hey, well now we have Omen out. This is a northern Thailand locality King Cobra. Let's set her down here. And she just reached about nine almost feet long. Like even compared to the mangrove king, she's not as thick. But she's a very calm snake. She's definitely calmed down a lot since I last saw her. As you can see, Chris is very confident with this one, which is a good sign. <laughs> oh no, what am I doing? Well, David, how long has it been since you saw her? I think last time I came, she was actually in shed and I didn't get to look at her, so... Two years ago, I couldn't even come close to what I'm doing now with her. Because she used to be extremely defensive and hate every person in sight. But now she's calmed down a lot. She's very used to me. She's used to, like, people in general. Yeah, I can see she's... She's quite active. Just more curious now than anything. Now this is the typical northern Thai look you're gonna get. Normal, uh, normally people associate King Cobras being either the Indian dark and white band morph or the Malaysian classic, the yellowish bronze look. There's quite a lot of variety in King Cobras. Especially in Thailand. Oh, especially. I think Thailand has some of the most variable King Cobras because it stretches so far north all the way to the south. Yeah, it has different get, just yeah, a whole get, spectrum of kings. Mm -hmm. So many different habitats in exactly. Thailand. The northeastern area is way different, the northwestern area is different, the central area. Northern peninsula. 
the south. Where do you think Thailand's most beautiful kings come from? That's hard to say, but my favorite one might be like Chiang Mai or my Hong Son. Well, if you're not counting the mangrove king, but that's still like understudied, so I can't really say much on that. But and the Mei Hong Song ones are very dark, aren't they? They can get like super dark, like yeah, I'd say like the Mei Hong Song stay pretty dark. My uh, my Skittle, the Skittles from Chiang Mai, she's like super golden, very light compared to all these. Such a sweet personality for a king. I think your like your subscribers can even compare this video now to like the old videos you shot with her yeah, true. years I actually, ago. I actually have some videos of this exact king on my channel already. If you scroll through my older videos, you can see that she's changed quite a lot in temperament since then. Become a sweet little lap dog. <laughs> yeah. Now she's a beautiful and a great ambassador for her genus. Just because the snake demands respect, which she still does, and they have incredibly toxic venom, feared by so many people, does not make them monsters at all. No, Look at really them. not. I mean, the snake is just, you can see, it's just curious. Yeah. And has, shows no sign of aggression or defensiveness at all. It, the reason uh, how she's acting right now, being very curious, is because I moved her in her enclosure into that room there. I've never had her out here before. And what she's doing now is she's flicking that tongue, she's looking around, where's everything at? Where's potential food at? So maybe she'll sit for a little while and then go about her way. See, she's putting up a little bit now, and you can see that typical northern Thai king hood, which is almost like an arrow mark rather than just bands. All right, as you can see, she is hooding up a little bit now, but I don't think this is really an Not aggressive hood. It's more just like balancing yeah. it. See, now that my hand's here, she's like retracting it. Sometimes kings will actually use their hood in order to help them balance on certain things. Shall we move on to the next king? Yeah, of course. Okay, so this is the part a lot of you have probably been waiting for. Everyone's favorite. Oracle the King Cobra. As you can see, he's already coming out really curiously. Hello. His head is just so big, it's like... I know how big it is, but every time I see it in real, it's like, whoa. And then you'll see the body. He's a bit shy in front of the cameras. Come on. Should I start? Yeah, getting... you can like lift him out. Just keep, make sure he doesn't turn on. He won't. It's a two-man job sometimes, especially yeah, right after he eats like a big His meal. girth is really like python size almost. Yeah, there's no way I can fit you guys into shot here. All right, let's, should we bring him outside? Yep. My head. <laughs> Support his weight. There we go. There we are. This is my first time seeing Oracle in the flesh. And uh, has a lot of flesh wounds. Oh, yeah. A lot of backstory to this guy. Yeah, tell us about the history of this snake. What happened to it? I have a video on him if you want to go into further detail, but what I'll say right now is that he is, well, he's been in captivity for about eight or nine years now, and so, uh, it was because he was rescued down south by fish and wildlife, he was kept in a farm, and now he's found his way to me. He was found trapped in someone's house, his body has these damaged marks because he was caught in a fence, 
and right at the tip of the tail there's like bite marks because the owner's dog kept biting and yanking him back through the see. fence over here on his tail he has some injuries that have healed up and the marks from the fence are yeah right there on the upper body you can see that the scales have healed as much as they could man this is a powerful snake he's not even trying anything he's just being completely calm and curious i'm just imagining what it would be like finding one this size in the wild and trying to wrangle it yeah <laughs> definitely not Imagine a one person like one job. this size with the super fired up attitude of your dark eyed one <laughs> Oh man, this see, thing is incredible. It, like zoom in and you can see like tiny scales. Because he'll never look like what he used to before the incident. They've sort of formed like little skews, like right here. And he doesn't even mind when I touch him. It's like been years. This is like over almost 10 years of healing. This is probably as good as it will get. He's quite an old snake. He's got some like growth spots growing on the side of his body. And he's really just a puppy dog now. He's just very curious, especially when he sniffs other kings. We've had two other females, uh, female kings out today. So he's like, where are the ladies at? I did just wash my hands to make sure that there's no smell. Yeah, I washed my hands and arms, but he can still sniff omen. Look at the size of these head scales, they're just ridiculously big. At least him smelling a female king's is better yeah, than him smelling oh, another snake. <laughs> Dude, whip you with the tail. His tail just fell on it. And look at this head, it's like literally the size of my fist. And the body is thicker than my arm here. And he has these huge scales on top of his head, which is typical for king cobras. The way you can actually identify king cobras from a shed skin is by these two large scales right here. A lot of the scale formations are very similar to like normal cobras, like monocle cobras, for example. But monocle cobras lack these two scales right here, which almost make like a heart formation. Look at what he's doing right now. We had a mangrove king out earlier and now he sniffs her scent. He's picking it up and I think if he wanted to, he could easily follow her scent back to her enclosure. As you can see, he's slightly putting up a little bit and not anymore. Gotta pick him up while supporting his entire body weight. Fit you guys in probably. How big is he in total, Chris? It's like 14 feet. Let's take a step back and hold him sideways so we can try and see that. Let's yeah. wrapped around us. He is wrapped up and not properly straight, but you can see he's it's very, very, very long. long. One this big in the world is probably aware of everything. All right, we're gonna wrap it up now. It's getting dark. I already thought I felt a few drops of rain, so. We're gonna call it a day. Definitely go check out Chris's channel. He's gonna be making a lot of new videos in the future. Uh, like, subscribe, and yeah, stay tuned for more. <laughs> Wicked. All right. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video. We really appreciate it. Don't forget to check out the links in the description for our social medias and whatnot. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Take care. Peace.